Shalom people. So I did a video a while back titled Byzantine icons and black Russians and in that video I brought out a mural or a fresco which was depicting the last judgment. Now let me just pull it up real quick. Now this is the image that I brought out in that video. Now as you can see, all of the figures are dark skin, dark flesh. Now you may be asking to yourself, KMZ, why are you bringing this back out? Well brothers and sisters, I've managed to find another icon which is depicting the Last Judgment. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a look at it and analyze it. So as we can see brothers and sisters, this is another variation of the um, icon which is titled The Last Judgment. And as you can see, everybody is dark skinned. Now for those of you brothers and sisters who are new to my channel, they are going to lie to you and tell you images and icons like these get dark over time due to old age, due to incense smoke from the monastery or due to some kind of withering. That is a lie. The reason why these figures are dark fleshed, dark skinned, is because they are depicting so-called black people. The people of the Bible were so-called black and the people who created these images were black. Contrary, contrary to popular belief, black people ruled medieval Europe through the dark ages, through the middle ages, what have you. The kings, the queens, the lords, the dukes, the marquises, the archduchesses, the so-called black, people like King James, um, King Henry, Henry VIII, Louis XIV, Queen Charlotte, Elizabeth I, um, George III, George III, George I, second and third, um, King John, the Vikings, the Celts, these were so-called black people. <laughs> now for those of you who are new, you may be taken aback and you may be saying to yourself, what the heck is this brother talking about? Black people ruled Europe? Yes, everything that you've been taught about black history is a, been a complete lie. Since the moment you left your mother's womb and you entered that public education system, it's all been narrative, okay? And when you've been taught a lie so long, when the truth finally comes out, it's going to sound absolutely crazy to you. But you always have to keep in mind the other nations are never going to have your best interest in heart. But I want to show you something. For example. So when, so as I said, they lie to you through the Hollywood movies, through the TV shows, through the school system, through the textbooks, what have you. And these are the type of that, these are the type of people that they show of the ancient world, okay? This is what they show or depict to be as, as an ancient Egyptian or a people of Kemet. And yes, the people of Kemet were a dark fleshed people. Let me go to my whitewashing folder. Now you see this here? This is a prime example of a narrative that you see in the Hollywood movies. Now these people, or what we would call a modern day Egyptian, are a mixture, are a mixture of a lot of the Turkish tribes, okay? A lot of the Ottoman Turks. Brothers, when we look at ancient history, the Babylonian, the Babylonians, the Assyrians, the Persians, the Persians, ancient Sumer, these were all dark fleshed people. Now, in and of itself, there are different races of dark-skinned people, okay? I've, what I've noticed, black people have a very um, hard time of accepting this. And when, when brothers say that there are different dark races of people, they think we are trying to separate. They think it's some kind of self-hate 
I'm going to try to separate each other. But I want to show you something. And this is also why a lot of you brothers and sisters think you descend from the ancient Egyptians or the people of Kemet. Yes, they were a dark flesh people. Hang on, let me go back to my folder. Now you see, these people will be more akin to the actual ancient people of Kemet. Okay, there's a difference. Now I'm going to show you something. Here are some Igbo Nigerians. And these people descend from Shem, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob whether some of them know it or not. And these are not the same as the people who I've just shown, okay? These are two different dark races of people. But what they will do, they will put all of us in one box and call us like the black African race. When it comes to dark races of people, brothers, dark races of people, melanated people, are indigenous and aboriginal to this planet, okay? So-called black people do not solely come from Africa. And this is why some of you brothers and sisters probably have a hard time when I say that so-called black people ruled Europe. Well, let me go back to the image. But yes, the Dark Ages, the Middle Ages, what have you, was ruled over by so-called black, um, so black people. Even going back further, when we look at the Byzantine Empire, uh, empire or byzantium that also was ruled over by black people when we look at constantine the great he was also a so-called black man so here's a coin of constantine now here's another image of constantine So this is an icon of Constantine and his mother Helen and as you can see they're both dark fleshed. Uh, one more time brothers and sisters, it's not dark fleshed because they got dark over time. The reason why they're dark fleshed is because they were so called black people okay. But yes, during the later, later part of the Roman Empire, so-called black people gained back dominion. I would say around like the mid-100 AD period. Like when we look at Roman a Roman emperor like Marcus Aurelius. Marcus, Aureli Marcus Aurelius was a so-called black man, believe it or not. Now the first, major ride, the first major rise of the Caucasian was through Alexander the Great or Alexander the Macedonian when he took over Greece and let me go back I just I just reminded myself of something and we, even when we go back before Alexander the Macedonian like I said brothers all ancient civilizations were dark flesh dark skinned it's just that the narrative is the narrative when you look at the textbooks the Hollywood movies and the TV shows when we look at ancient civilizations they're always depicted as Caucasian and they always depict us as just slaves um which folder is it in i think it's in this now you see and this is what the ancient world would have looked like as you can see just reading some of these see greek or phoenician female mask um, a Greek vase of a youth because like I said the people of that landmass were dark flesh dark skinned and then Alexander the Great took over that region and even when we look at um when they gained back when they gained dominion it was never a fully white society per se it was always a mixed multitude yes 
the Idumeans were in rulership, but it was always a mixed multitude of people. But going back to this image here Now as we can see everybody's dark skinned So let's take some zoom in shots As we can see the saints dark fleshed See the angels See, dark flesh, dark skinned, the angels, the saints, what have you. Clicked off my image. Now let's, now brothers, going on the narrative, right? Images like, images like these get dark over time. Look at the books they are holding up, which I'm assuming is the scriptures. Why are the pages in this book still purely white? Why didn't the pages in this book get dark over time? It's funny how this dark over time effect only seems to affect the parts where it shows their complexion, like their hands, their face or their feet. Now look at this here brothers. Here's Christ, Yahawashai. And as you can see, he's a dark skinned man. One more time brothers and sisters, everything that you've been taught about history is a lie. I understand they always teach that dark races of people, all we ever were, were just a bunch of slaves and they were, they were basically the kings, the queens, the lords, the dukes, the ancient philosophers, the builders, the builders of all ancient civilizations. They bought everything to the, basically, man will still be in like a primitive stage if it wasn't for them bringing everybody up that's what i'm saying real history does not benefit them real history benefits us because they rule they they rule through deception they rule through lies manipulation deceit and subterfuge and one more time brothers and sisters you have been taught a lie and a narrative for so long so even when i bring these images out it may be hard for you some of you brothers and sisters to grasp this to grasp this information but I want to focus on one specific section on this um, fresco or this icon now for those of you brothers and sisters who have seen my Byzantine icons and a uh, black Russians video you already know where I'm, where I'm about to go with this now look at this section here brothers My notifications are going off, hang on. Let me just mute my phone. As you can see, there's a particular group of people here that seem to have a different complexion from everybody else. And it looks like they're getting burnt up or being sent into to the lake of fire. Now brothers, sisters, once again, going on a narrative, images like these get dark over time. Why? Hasn't this specific group of people over here, why didn't they get dark over time? Now look at everybody else. You see, everybody's dark skinned, the saints, the angels, Christ, all dark flesh, dark skinned. But this specific group of people here are not. And as you can see, they're being burnt up. Now for YouTube, this is not any hate. I am just analyzing this icon. Like I just showed, everybody's dark skin, but this group of people here are not. So things that make you go, hmm. 
And it just goes to show you how people knew who they were when they were in their rulership and they knew who certain people weren't. Now, I want to go back to the icon that I brought out in my visiting icons of Black Russians video and compare them. So as we can see here, this one is located in Romania. As you can see, everybody's dark, flesh dark skinned. See, and in this one, Yahweh Shai Christ has an afro. Like there's no getting around that these are so-called black people. But let's go back, go back down to the bottom right. <laughs> now look at this. There's a certain, once again, is, there's a particular pale flesh people being led away into captivity. Now this is a bit blurry, so let me get up a more HD image. <laughs> now you see, brothers, you see the chains are where you see the chains around their neck, being being damned, being led away into captivity. One more time, YouTube. I am just analyzing these icons. Okay, this is not hate. You know, I have to put that disclaimer out. Now look at this. See, so see the chains around the neck. Completely different contrast to the angels, the saints, and Christ. So now let's go back to the other one again. See, in the um, the one that's located located in Romania, they were being led away in chains, and this and in this one, some of them are even being burnt up. So, what does this say about biblical prophecy? One more time, this is not hey, I am just analyzing the icon, and we all can see with our own eyes. See, angels dark skinned, saints dark skinned, Christ Yahawashai dark skinned, certain people being damned, not dark skinned. So now brothers, I've managed to find a detailed description of what's going on in the Last Judgment icon. So the Last Judgment icon, late 17th century, Yaroslavl Art Museum, which is in Russia. So we're going to read along. The expectation of the second coming of Christ, the Last Judgment, united all medieval people. The plot of the end of the world was developed in detail in ancient Russian art. This is one of the most common compositions widely known in many icons and frescoes. All scenes are ordered and form a kind of arch symbolizing the gates to the kingdom of heaven, which will open after the final decision of the fate of mankind. The composition of the icon is empathetically symmetrical in Yaroslavl and has um, a central axis, axis formed by the figure of the Saviour, images of the throne with a cross, God's right hand, and the image of a judged human soul. This vertical divides the space of the icon and all the depicted images into two parts, righteous and unrighteous. The grandiose picture of the Last Judgment represents the end of the world as a triumph of justice and universal joy. Hence, such a triumph, sound, of this image reflecting the idea of the victory of the forces of light, goodness and truth. So now we're going to get a detailed description section by section of what we are looking at. So let me zoom in. So right here, 
it reads, At the top is a paradise with a righteous blissful blissfulness in it. As a symbol of the end of the world, the sky is always depicted in the form of a scroll twisted by angels. And this is this little highlighted section here. So this part right here. Christ, again, appearing on the earth, is depicted with a sword in his hand. The mother of God and John the Baptist stand before him at their feet. Uh, stand before him at their feet are Adam and Eve. So this is this little section right here, as you can see, highlighted. So right here and right here. Twelve apostles are sitting on the sides with books in their hands. Behind them are fiery faced angels, the gods of heaven. And once again, these are the highlight sections, the twelve apostles. So right here. The devils are trying to pull the scales, but the angels put a handkerchief moistened with tears of repentance on the other bowl, and this bowl outweighs. So that's right here. The half-naked figure is a symbol of the soul which bears the last answer, which bears the answer at the last judgment. From the fiery mouth of the infernal beast rises a long withering serpent stud with rings. The inscriptions read, the inscriptions on the rings call human sins. So that's this section right here. That was described. Let's see if I can zoom in more. So these two sections over here and here. See what? In paradise, we see the prudent thief crucified with Christ on Golgotha, having repented. The robber believed in the Saviour and went to heaven. So that's here. The righteous are approaching the gates of paradise, led by Apostles Peter, led by the Apostle Peter, with the keys to paradise in his hand. So, that, so that's that section here. So these three men here. The bosom of Abraham is a part of the composition of the last judgment. The forefathers, the forefathers, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, with the souls of the righteous are sitting among the free, the trees of paradise. So this is Abraham, Isaac and Jacob here. So this section here. Demons drag sinners to hell. Among them are representatives, representatives of different nations. Moses points to Christ with one hand and holds the sinner by the, by the beard with the other. So that's right here. In the center of hell, on the beast, Satan with Judas. In the hands of Judas is a bag with 30 pieces of silver. So right here. So 
So this highlighted section here. The dead are resurrected from the earth and water to appear at the last judgment. Right here. And last one here. In the lower part, animals are depicted as symbols of the four pagan kingdoms, Persian, Roman, Greek, and Macedonian. Uh, that seems to be it. Wait, wait a minute, brothers. What about this section here? <laughs> Why did they choose to leave this out? What about these people here? Hmm. So they have descriptions for everything else, but not this specific group of people here. Now, why is that? Things that make you go, hmm. Hopefully that was an edifying lesson for you brothers and sisters. Now, for those of you brothers and sisters who want to financially support me through donations, you can now support me on YouTube memberships, PayPal, or Cash App and Patreon. With that being said, giving all praises to the Most High Yahweh in the name of Yahweh Shai.